Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 41 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, I'm going to show you how to create servlets using Eclipse. And if you don't know, a servlet's just a web application that receives requests from users and then responds via our browser. And what we need to do, and this is your responsibility, is you're going to have to go to tomcat.apache.org, and you're going to have to download Tomcat. And I have a link underneath this video that provides step-by-step -step how to install this on either a Mac or a PC or a Linux box or anything. But I just want to go over this because it's very important. You want to come down here to binary distributions. And if you can't see this, then just view it full screen in HD video. And you're going to want to download either the zip or the tar.gz. I downloaded the tar.gz because I'm on a Mac. And you're also going to want to come down here to where it says source code distributions. And you're going to want to download this zip file that's right here. We'll get more into how to use that later. Then what you're going to need to do is go to eclipse.org forward slash downloads. And you're going to want to go to right here where it says Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. You're going to want to install that and just come over here and pick your version of your operating system and download it. Really simple. So let's get into the code. Now to set up Eclipse so that we'll be able to access our new Tomcat server that's very easy to install. The first thing you're going to want to do is inside of Eclipse, go to Preferences and open that up. And then you want to click on Server right here, Runtime Environment right there. And then here you can see I have Tomcat installed, but if you don't, just click on Add. And it's going to pop up all these different versions of Tomcat inside of Apache. And you just want to click on one of those guys, click on Next. You're going to want to browse to the location for your version of Tomcat, click on open, da 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 da, and click finish. In my situation, I'm going to hit cancel that. Another question I get from you guys all of the time is how to shut off serializable errors that you get a lot of time inside of Eclipse. I'm going to go over exactly what all that stuff means, but if you want to shut it off again inside of preferences, in this situation, you're going to want to go to Java and open that guy up, and then you want to open up compiler, and then go to errors and warnings. Scroll down inside of this guy, and then you come right here where it says potential programming problems, serializable class without serial version UID, and you want to click over here and click on ignore, but I'm going to leave that warning on. So now you have the server running inside of Eclipse. Now we're going to actually create ourselves a servlet, and to do this, I'm just going to go into my Project Explorer, which is right here on the left side of my screen. I'm going to right click on it, I'm going to go new, and then click on project. Now inside of this, I'm going to scroll pretty much the whole way down inside of this directory here that's called web and open that up and then I'm going to click on dynamic web project and then click on next. Now I'm going to give this a name being lesson 41 to just stick with what I normally do here. I'm going to come down here and click on Apache Tomcat version 7, leave everything else the same and click on next and then click on next and let this be lesson 41, let this be web content and make sure you click on generate web.xml deployment descriptor, more on what that means later on as well and then click on finish so everything is right here in lesson 41 under project explorer now i'm going to come down here where java resources exist and i'm going to right click on that and then go new and then go servlet under java package i'm going to type in hello servlets and then this guy class name is going to be lesson 41 just like before and then click on next click on next again here I'm going to uncheck constructors from superclass and then click on finish. And that's going to go in there and build all of the different files that I'm going to need to be able to use. Now what I want to do is implement tooltips so that I'll be able to actually put my mouse over top of these guys and be able to get some information in regards to what these different methods and libraries do. To do that, you just need to go into Java Resources and open that up and then come down here to Libraries where this guy is and then open that up and then come down here where servlet forward slash API dot jar exists. Now I'm going to right click on this guy and come down to Properties and click on that. Now remember whenever I had you download the zip file version of Tomcat. Let's go back just so you know what I'm talking about. This guy right here, source code distribution and then zip. This is where we're going to be able to use that. What we're going to do is go to location path and then we're going to go external file and then we're going to locate that. So wherever you downloaded it to and then you can find it right here, Apache Tomcat blah 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 dot zip and then I'm going to hit open right like that and then I'm going to hit OK. Now whenever I put my mouse over top of any of these little guys, a tooltip is going to pop up and it's going to provide me information in regards to what these libraries do. So that's kind of, kind of useful. Useful. Now I'll get into exactly what all these different guys do. First off, you have the Java IO. This just handles IO exceptions, and I've gone over exceptions many times in the past. And actually, whenever I'm here, I'm going to import a new library. It's going to be import java.io.printwriter. 
And this object just contains a whole bunch of methods that are going to allow me to print out to the browser. And you have this guy here, servlet exception. Of course, it handles any type of exceptions that are triggered by the servlets. JavaX servlet annotation web servlet, which is actually this guy right here. This allows you to declare the configuration for the servlet. And as you can see down here, it just basically says that whenever somebody goes to my website and goes to forward slash lesson 41, that that is the location for this web application or this servlet, and it'll execute from there. So that's all that's going on with that. Then you have HTTP servlet. And it's just an abstract class that's used to create servlets. You know, of course, just like before, it has all the methods and all the things you need. This is just going to handle passing requests to do get and do post, which are two methods that I'm going to talk about here in a second. And then this guy right here handles the responses. So let's scroll down through here. And you can just see I'm extending HTTP servlet right there. Then we get into the serial ID type information in regards to what that means. What you have to understand, if you don't quite get this, don't worry about it. I'll get more into it later on. But basically, any class that implements the serializable interface is required, at least by Eclipse in this situation, to define an ID number. Now, if you don't do it, Eclipse automatically just gives you one. Basically, what this does, this ID, is it just represents your current version of said class. And if anything about your class ever does change, then your ID should also be changed. And the reason why these are used at all is just to remain backwards compatible for previous versions of said class. That's the reason why they are there. So if you have any other questions about that, just leave them in the comments section below. I'll be more than happy to answer any specific questions. Then we get down here to this method, do get, and the server calls this method to handle any type of get requests that are issued from the browser. And this is normally used, this method, here whenever you don't need to gather information from a form. Not saying that it can't be gathered that way, but that's normally whenever do get is used. And for those who don't know, which I'm sure if you guys are watching this, everybody knows what a get request is. But what get request just sends data as part of the URL. So if you just have golf.com blah 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 forward slash about dot html and then if somebody wanted to pass along city and Pittsburgh, like that's what a get request is. All the information is being passed is passed to URL. Of course you guys know that. Well now inside of this do get, since I'm not going to be passing any information or receiving any information from the user, I'm going to actually use this method. And the first thing I need to do is go response, set, content, type. I need to define what type of information I'm going to be passing here. And in this situation, it's going to be HTML information. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just defining what type of information is going to be passed. And then I got to go print writer. And this object, just like I said before, has a whole bunch of methods in it that allow me to print out to my browser. And I'm just going to call it output, which is probably a horrible name, but whatever. And I'm going to go response, get writer. And all the code that I have here is available also underneath this video in a little URL. And basically what get writer is going to do for me is return a print writer that can write to the browser. And then I have to actually define what type of information I'm going to print out to the browser. So in that situation, I just go output again, print line, and then I'm just going to type my HTML directly inside of here. I'm going to go over neat and better ways of doing this in the future, but yes, people actually do this. And let's just say I put an H3 tag inside of there and I just go hello servlets. And then a closing h3 tag and a closing body tag and then an html closing tag and that's what's going to be passed out to the browser whenever people come to this web application and then we have do post and the server calls this method to handle any put requests and normally like i said before it's used whenever you need to gather information from say a form or something else and pass it back for this guy to process that's all we're going to be doing with this guy so far so let's save it and then we'll come down here to where it says web content, and then we're gonna go web forward slash INF, and then we're gonna open up web.xml inside of the screen. And we're gonna make a couple little changes here. And this is what we call the deployment descriptor. And basically what it does is it defines the URL for the servlet, and also it handles encoding information. So it basically says, hey, Tomcat, this is the location for my servlet. So if somebody types in my URL, and then they type in, for example, I'm gonna replace this, and type in lesson 41, then it is going to know that that is the location for my servlet after the URL. So that's all we need to change with that guy. So we're going to save him as well.
And occasionally you're going to see what's called a restricted library error. Whenever it occurs, you're going to know it occurred. If something like that does happen, you're going to come over here, click on your project name, which is Lesson 41 in this situation, go to Properties, go click on Java Build Path, and then you're going to want to come in here to where it says JRE System Library, and then click on Remove. That will delete it off of there, and it will get rid of that issue. But then you have to add it back in. To add it back in, just click on Add Library. Of course, remove it before you try to add it back in. Click on Add Library, click on JRE System Library, and then click on Next, and then Finish. And it's going to load that guy in there, and it'll make that error go away if you do get it. But I'm all done. I know it seemed like I was long-winded there, but this is actually, I can do this in seconds whenever I'm used to it. If I want to actually run this server, I just right-click on Lesson 41 up here. And I just come down to run as, and then I go run on server. Click on that. Everything else here is perfectly fine. Click on Next. If Lesson 41 wasn't over here in the configured area, it would be here. And I click on it and click on Add, another thing that might slip you up. And then click on Finish, and it's going to open up everything. Just leave everything like this the way it is. And there you see, Hello Servlets, there is our little guy. And actually, if I click on this and then jump over to my browser and paste into there, you're going to see Hello Servlets also opens up inside of there. So there you go. That's how to set up Eclipse so that you can easily build servlets. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.